Hey everyone, Rachel Agbar on our uh, Level Up with the Agbars Lunchtime Tea Talk. You know, I just want to greet you all. I have chrysanthemum with honey, um, also moringa and um, ginger crystals. So I'm excited about it. My co-host isn't going to join me. Maybe he'll join later. He actually is on an appointment which is awesome because we don't panic, we pivot around here. And today's topic is family. We're back on family with the five S. And I just recently had the honor of being at my daughter's shower. She's having a baby, she's due next month. And I'm so excited about it because uh, I have 17 grandchildren. He's going to make baby number 18. Um, and for all those that know, mothers and grandmothers, that all your grandchildren are special, definitely. But the ones that come from your daughter, it just seems like you're a little more closer to them because it seems like you spend more time with them. So this is actually her first baby. And man, I'm just elated. I'm so excited. So the whole family is excited. And, you know, just having and bringing another life into this world and and, you know, the way the world is today, you can be a little reluctant, you know, by saying, hey, I really don't want to bring a baby into this world with the way things are. You know, the way these cops are killing our people is crazy. It's almost like um, we all have targets on our backs, you know, um, and, it's, and it's, it's amazing how these cops are willing to sacrifice their lives because I know they have families and children and, you know. They're living on a cop salary, which is not all that great. But if other, you know, the other spouse is working as well, you would think that they would have a pretty decent life. Right. But it's almost like they are willing to sacrifice and give up everything just to kill somebody African-American. It's almost like they're getting a badge of honor to do it. You know, that adrenaline is rushing so much that you, you know, you're not even in a life threatening situation like the gentleman that was just killed. You know, looking, I just, I saw a picture of him. Doesn't look threatening. Nobody said he had a gun or anything, but yet his life is gone. You know, it's almost like uh, they don't put any value on us. And I'm, I'm just grateful that everything is coming to a head right now. You know, with family, people are really, well, from what I know, people are stepping up and just really talking about what's going on. You know, there used to be a real big mask in families, homes, you know, what's said in this house stays in this house, all of those insignificant innuendos, you know, that has kept the family sick for so long. I think now, you know, people are willing to come out and they're talking more about depression, talking more about uh, anxiety, and panic attacks, stress on these jobs, you know, working for these corporations and they just treating you like, uh, like property because, you know, uh, when you're J when you're on a job, just over broke, you're still a slave. You're a slave to the system. You're still a, having to answer to someone. You can't. Your time, your life is not your own. It's being dictated by a dictator, you know. So yeah, we we really want to start sharing uh, entrepreneurship with our families. We want to start training our children, rearing them early letting them know what's your vision what's your dreams what's your goals learn a trade so that you can be an entrepreneur you don't have to work for someone else you can be a dependent and work for yourself you can own a, a big business you can thrive you know but we teach our children growing up go to school so that you can learn and get a job so you can build someone else's dreams so how we reared our children has been a thick old setup from the beginning. You know, we don't even, you know, they, they're they going to school and learning this information. And then even if they get a PhD, you know, um, if the, even if they get a, a, a master's degree, they still, people with master's degrees is working at McDonald's, you know, working at Walmart, just trying to do whatever they can to, um, you know, and to stay above water. And 
man, it's, it's just a, it's a sad situation. And then, you know, as, as a financial professional, when we're sharing with families how to build a legacy, you know, and how to create generational wealth, how do you do it? Do it with the youngest people in the family. Because another setup we have come to know is with our food. You know, our food is being pumped up with hormones and saline solution. And, and as a result, look at our, our people. Our people are walking around looking like these blown up chickens. I highly want to encourage you all, if you can't purchase your meats organic, try to go to the halal market. Try to go to the kosher market to get your meat. Spend a little extra money so that you're not being, you know, you are what you eat. So if you're animals and flesh that has been injected with all of different things to, to make it bigger so that it sells faster or to, to also, you know, meat is, is brown in color, you know, because of the blood that has bled from it. When it's naturally done, the meat turns brown, but because it doesn't look right brown, they uh, blow it up with oxygen just to make it look red in color so that it looks more inviting. That's still processed. Try to get away from processed foods as much as possible, just so you and your family can have a chance to live long, longevity, right? Getting back to generational wealth. You know, so because so many of us have high blood pressure, hypertension, uh, conge congestional heart failure, um, diabetes. Man, these things are running rapid in the Black community, especially African American community. And we've never questioned why is this going on? It's because of the food that we're eating, it's because of the water that we're drinking. I suggest you all get. Um, Get a alkaline water machine if you can, you know, invest in your family, invest in your health, invest in your life is super important. Yes, you're going to spend some extra dollars, but guess what? Compared to what? Compared to the doctor bills that you could, the life support that you may have to be on. You know, many of us are doing all the right things, but we're just in the wrong vehicle in regards to leaving a legacy to our heirs, leaving a, a generational wealth to our families. You know, we're depending on these 401ks, tax deferred plans to get us to where we want to go. That's 30 to 40 years post-retirement. I just want you all to think to yourself. I know I'm kind of all over the place, but it's still incorporating family. It's still incorporating what's important. Not Jordans, not the next concert, not turning up at the Stone so, but generational wealth, legacy planning. Why should every generation have to start over when the matriarch or the, the glue to the family uh, deceased? Now the family gets these small term policies where there's just enough money to bury the dead. But then guess what? Now, if there's still a mortgage left on the property, families aren't coming together and saying, hey, how can we save this property? How can we come together, pay this mortgage, pay the taxes, pay the insurance? on this property so we don't lose it thing. And I know, especially, I don't know about other cultures, but I know mine's for show. Soon as somebody passed away, the first thing you want to do is sell the pro property so that you can get a profit. But then guess what? One year down the line, two years down the line, that money's gone and everybody's back renting. Family is all broken up and nobody has any power. We don't have any power because we don't have any purchasing power. I'm going to take a sip on that. Oh, this tea is so good. I should have put some lemon in there too. You know, I'm the grand mixer. I'm going to mix it up. My best friend, he passed away years ago, but he used to say, Rachel, you love the Clash flavors, huh? Yes, I do. Back to this. There's a I love to sit down with you all to share with you how you can get your child covered with this product. Not only is it used so that they can go to college later, but it also turns into a retirement plan later for them that they can pull tax free dollars from. So all your initial contributions that you're saving on a monthly, quarterly or annual basis, you can write off on your taxes. When you get ready to pull, this is what you call your own family bank. You're going to pull money from this plan. 
that you can use that's not only going to increase your credit score, but it's also going to increase your purchasing power. It's going to actually become a family bank for you and your family. So as you're saving your monthly premiums, the money that you pull from, that you've kind of borrowed from yourself, you're paying back with your annual premiums. So not only are you going to gain this interest, but it's going to grow. It's going to continue to increase. It's going to continue to compound. It's going to continue to grow the cash value. It's going to continue to increase the death benefit. What does that mean? That means that the whole family becomes wealthy off the youngest person in the family. Because why? The younger generation is healthier and they're younger. So the cost of the plan is a lot less uh, exorbitant. So what does that mean? That means if you get two or three family members to commit, let's all, instead of creating this, you know how you talk to people and they say, oh, we're saving money for our child in the bank. We all know the bank doesn't hardly give you any interest. What if an emergency arise? Then you got to pull money from that plan and you got to start right back over. But if you pulled it from the plan that I'm uh, sharing with you, it continues to grow interest. So it's just a win, win, win. And it's not invested directly in the market. So if the market goes down, guess what? You don't lose any of your principal. You're a cat. These are so important, especially for the younger generation. I also want to share another plan. It's called a final expense plan. It's super important for every family member to have a final expense plan. Why? Because GoFundMe is not an insurance policy. And it's sad to watch this. I know you all seen it. People show up on Instagram and show up on Facebook and they look like they live in the dream life. This person passes away, especially, you know, right now with COVID. I've, I've known so many people pass away, not just from COVID, but this year from so many different things. Rest in peace to our latest, which is DMX, one of my favorite rappers today. So, Heart attack, that's what they said. I'm not sure. House in order so that your family can thrive. So generation generations to come can thrive. Final expense plan is super important. One company specifically that we work with, their final expense plan goes from 5000 up to 50000 Many people say, why would you need $50,000? Okay, well, I'll give you. I had someone uh, that was in the military. They have a military plan. The military will do the 21 gun salute. They'll bury you at the nice uh, military cemetery. However, if you want a blinged out headstone, they're going to provide a, a regular headstone. So I have a, a client that now just purchased a final expense plan just so she can have the type of headstone that she desires. So you know, several reasons why you want to have a final expense plan. Now, yeah, we have those people that say, I, uh, you know, just throw me in a pine box. I don't care what you all do with me afterwards. But guess what? The funerals are not for the person that's passed away. The funerals for the family members left. Right. And most times, if you have a family member that love and care about you, they're not going to just throw you in a pine box and get a plastic urn. They're not. And even if they do, because I had a client tell me one time, guess what? I found a final expense plan for a thousand dollars. I called the place because I'm a researcher. They said, yes, we give you a wooden casket and a plastic urn for a thousand dollars. I said, wow. Now, for the individuals, that that's all they can afford. I get it. But now what about the repass? What about the memorial? What about flowers? What about the garment that the person's going to wear? Not only that, one other company that we offer, not only can you create your will online, but you can also create your obituary and let it sit in the iCloud storage. So it's available within 24 to 48 hours to your beneficiary. They don't have to figure out what high school you went to, what was your favorite color, your favorite scripture, your favorite song, your favorite poem. Because let me tell you, I don't know if you've ever had to bury someone, but it can get very, very tedious. It can get very emotional. 
So if you are mourning the loved one, you don't want to have to try to figure out all of their accolades, all of the wonderful things that they've done. So it would behoove you as the individual to not allow your family to have to suffer that. That's very stressful. It can be very overwhelming and it can be very, hmm, it could just be very challenging. So what we try to do is just take out the stress. And all you have to do, when I'm talking to people, I tell you, oh, here she goes. She's talking about insurance. She's talking about legacy planning. She's talking about generational wealth. To me, outside of God, what else is there to talk about? Because if you don't have your house in order, none of that other stuff matters. And if you're going throughout your life building a legacy, why wouldn't you want to make sure that that legacy is secure for your future generations? You know, I've seen, I, I know a lady recently, she does a lot of work on her home, loves to fix up her home. But then when I talked to her and I asked her, do you have anything in place? So if something happened to you, your heirs would be able to continue keeping this lovely home intact. She shared with me that she realized that she should have started early planning in that fashion because she has some pre-existing conditions that now she may not qualify. But then she has a wonderful daughter that not only uh, works and has a beautiful home and, and uh, you know, very, very savvy. She mentioned that, um, let me make sure that my daughter doesn't go down the same road I went down. So let me let you talk to my daughter so you can make sure that she has everything in place. And so, of course, we want to make sure that we're helping families to do that. My husband is great. I support him. He's been going out just sharing this information with families and uh, just really helping families to uh, be in a better position. That's what we do, right? Year after year, we're looking to be in a better position. We're looking for the next generation to be in a better position than we were in, right? Because no offense to any of my um, um, predecessors in regards to my family, but many people don't plan to fail, but they fail to plan. Because like my grandmother, she got, you know, she passed away in a fire. So, of course, her legacy, all that she created, all that she worked hard for, 35 years at Summit Medical Center as an LVN, pretty much went up in flames with her as far as like the will. So that's why I think it's so important to utilize Tenzing so that, you know, no matter what happens to you, your final wishes are safe, safely locked away for your beneficiaries. So, yeah, there was uh, money in that fire for, for the home for the two daughters to split and share. But guess what? Just like I said, this happened in 2011. And not to put anybody on blast, but these two daughters, they don't have anything to show from that. You know, and both of them have children. And some of their children have children and their children have children. So, again, a legacy starting from ground zero. So, uh, yeah, this topic is about family and it's also leaning towards, you know, making sure that you're safeguarding your family. You know, we walk around all the time talking about how much we love our family and we love our kids. Now, look, I'm going to take another sip on this one because I have several friends. Mm. Let me share this. I have so I have lost so many friends that are no longer my friends because they haven't wanted to sit down with me so I can share this information. I don't know what it is about individuals. If I had some gossip, if I had some drama, if I had some pain, guess what? Chat blow all the way up, all the way up. Everybody and their mama become a therapist, want to tell me how I can get through it, what I should do. When it comes to this information, oh, crickets, crickets, crickets. People don't want to sit down for a couple reasons. They don't want to talk about their health, right? Because they show up and appear like it's all good. They don't want to tell you, hey, I'm experiencing this. When these are the type of things we should talk about. They don't also don't want to say, my finances aren't what I want them to be. You know, I have a lot of debt. My credit is not that well. Because guess what? These are all areas that we help you to grow in, right? People like to complain. 
I'm talking about family. Some family members I call, I got to take a deep breath and, and take some relaxing tea before I call them. Why? Because they on a complaining tip. I don't know about you, but people love to complain. I was listening to one of my favorite philosophers, Eckhart Tolle, and he was sharing how people don't elaborate on good things. Why? Because to say something was wonderful, how many times can you say that? Right? Oh, it was great. It was wonderful. You could talk a little bit about, you know, the details, but that's it. But something bad, oh, you can go on and on for days. Just, you know, criticize, tear it down, analyze. So it's, that's why the subconscious remembers most of the negative experiences more than it remembers the positive experiences because the negative experiences are always accentuated, not so much the positive. But what if we flip that? Because see, we're, we are in charge of our destiny. What if we flipped it? What if we accentuated the positive in all areas? What if we only focused on the, the positive and the good things? You know, because see that brain automatically, what we call stinking thinking, it automatically wants to pick apart something. You might give something a comment, a compliment, but then it's a butt behind it. What if we get rid of the butt? Oh, she's such a wonderful person, but she's not, you know, it's always a butt. Let's get rid of the butt. Let's just talk about the good things so that we can change the whole trajectory of our financial future, change the whole trajectory of the way that our family think about themselves. Notice how when we get dressed, we are, you know, in the mirror, say to someone, do I look okay? Is everything all right? Why couldn't we look in the mirror and just be okay with what we saw? It's almost like we have to get validation from someone else in order to know that we're okay. You know, the creator give us all discernment. And instead of picking ourselves apart, even if somebody give us a compliment, and they might say, oh, I like your hair. Oh, this old thing, I had this thing for a long time. Why not just say thank you? Thank you. I learned that from a friend. She told me, when someone gives you a compliment, because it used to be hard for me to take compliments. See, I'm a giver. I know how to give, 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 but I, it was hard for me to receive. Didn't know how to receive. Didn't know how to feel when somebody gave me something. So a good friend, she shared with me, just learn how to say thank you. That was so powerful for me. Oh my God, that was powerful. So now I know how to say thank you. Another sip. Well, I'm coming to the close of my wonderful lunchtime tea talk. Just a blessing. I got a couple minutes. A blessing to, you know, be able to share, man. I appreciate Zoom. I appreciate YouTube, Facebook Live, Instagram Live, all of these avenues that we get an opportunity to express ourselves, especially with COVID and being sheltered in place. And still, hopefully, everybody's respecting it. You know, places are opening up and we're starting to feel like it's back to normal. But I don't think anything is going to be back to normal. And guess what? It shouldn't be because back to normal really wasn't normal, <laughs> right? It was more of a subdue, a more of a go along to get along, or more of a, you know, um, just keep on dredging, dredging like the ox. You know, the word of God talks about don't muscle the ox that dredges the corn, right? So when you see something isn't right with your family, don't do what my family used to do. And that's what goes on in this house stays in this house. My household was so super sick, but on the outside looking in, it looked like, oh, that family has it all together because they live on a hill. They got multiple cars, got a gardener. A gardener can fool some people. Got a gardener come cut your lawn instead of you out there picking, make you think, oh, they got money. They got a gardener. Man, so many misconceptions. Again, I just want to talk about the positive. I just want to share with all of you all the way we can have power 
as a people. Power as a people is by getting financially set and sound. How do we do that? Sit down with a financial professional and find out what your options are. I share with people all the time this wonderful book right here. What would the Rockefellers do? This book is amazing. It's by someone named Garrett B. Gunderson. Talks about how the Rockefellers today are still one of the number one wealthiest families in America. Why? Because they use whole life insurance. But what if they had used index strategies? They would have been the wealthiest family in America. Man. I'm trying to ask you all, become researchers, become studiers. This book right here, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill, unlocks so many wonderful, wonderful, well-kept secrets, okay? Because the traditional Americans, the Europeans, they did not want to change the face of the financial industry. So for 113 years, they kept these type of informations away from us. And yes, they said, you want to keep something from an African-American, put it in a book. That's not in all cases. African-Americans, we have been inventors, creators. But what happens is because we haven't had the purchasing power, then yes, traditional European-Americans will take our ideas, create it on their own and say that they created it and never give us an ounce of credit for it. But it's time for us to get off the pity pot. It is not time to pour me, pour me. And then pour me a drink. Here comes my co-host. I'm gonna let him say goodbye to everyone. Man, we had hello, Mr. Co Mr. Co-host, Mr. Akbar. How are you, sir? I am so I am so happy to be here. You know, just last <laughs> minute dropping in. You know, call it a cameo. But guess what? Yes. I, was, I was listening to what some of what you were saying. I am so impressed by you, Mrs. Akbar. I am so proud to be your husband. I am so excited to be a part of your family. I mean, wow. this is incredible. The relationship that we have developed and how we are able to merge our ideas and our visions, you know, traveling in the same direction in the same car. Mm. I appreciate it's you so amazing. much. And so everybody is listening, you know, family is everything. Family is everything. That's where it starts and that's where it ends. And so whatever's required for you to make your family the very best, as far as relationships, communication, how you guys engage one another, it all has to be progress. Progress. Yeah, Ms. So Alpar, before we go, can you give us at least three to five tips on, excuse me, how to get the family on track? What are some things you would you would uh, offer families when you 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 know what go on with families? What are some well, of the yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Five. Thank you, thank you. But you know, you threw me off with five. I was like five. All right. I mean, you know, we can go with ten, but you know. Yeah. So now, uh, the the first thing I would think, you know, the family has to be cohesive. You see, everybody seemed to be, you know, in their own direction now, and yeah. so collectively as a family, because you know, we're talking about now improving the generational aspect of family, not just our immediate, you know, right now you know, my relationship with you. I'm talking about grandchildren and great grandchildren. What are we doing now, you know, as a vision for our family? And so first it has to be that calling, you know, where are we going collectively? And then you want to outline some steps that you're going to definitely take. And everybody has to be contributors to this. So first thing, you want to know where you're going. Second thing, how you get there. Then you start putting together the plans of what you're going to need to get there. And so when you when you do those things, whatever begins to surface as a result of that, you got to regroup periodically to make sure that everything is on course. You know, it's just like the, the smart chart, you know, just follow that formula, you know, the smart chart. And you should be all right with that. But you always want to have a timeline where you check in to make sure that things are going the way you guys originally thought they should be going. And so, you know, there's five. Right. Is, is, did you need more? You know, that that's awesome. If you want to give a couple more, I think it's awesome. And I'm putting them in the chat, too. So they'll just be available for anyone that may be looking. Communication. You always want to make sure that you are communicating effectively. Because sometimes we think we're communicating and we're just having a conversation with ourselves, And we're expecting everybody to understand exactly what we're talking about. Never clarified it. 
war we never sought to have their attention and so when you're talking about something as important as a family vision you know collectively creating a situation where the family now is moving collectively in the wonder you got to make sure that the people that you're talking to are listening mm. you see that's how, important yeah how can you effectively communicate with a family member who's set in their ways and really kind of closed-minded and not really open to new ideas or new information that's a that's a challenge in and of itself it's a great question but I, I think now when you have a when you have a, a terrific idea, people won't accept your terrific idea. So now the strategy has to be because the person, you know, that that you're talking to or is stuck in their own idea, you got to somehow present that as their idea. Yeah. Yeah. And if they think it's their idea, they're gonna have that idea just as inculcated into their thought process as their stubbornness about what they already have in there. But how do you get people to accept an idea that's not theirs? Well, you introduce it in a way as if they came up with the idea. Does that yeah. make sense? Definitely, it does. But, you know, when, when you were saying that, what came up for me is about time. Time. You know, a lot of times it's not a lot of time to, you know, to pull information from someone so you can restructure it in a way that they grab it to say, that they came up with it or it's their idea. That's just, it's a lot of energy, a lot of time. So I guess what we would do is just kind of just uh, sprinkle some seeds, right? Just along yeah, the way. That's right. Uh, we, always, we always learn, we always learn that from the scenario, you know, of the, uh, and everybody use it to make the, uh, uh, an effective point, the farmer. Yes. You see? And we, we plant the seed. Yes. And then we got to understand what's necessary now to get the seed to grow. Yes. You see? And then when we do everything to get the seed to grow, it don't happen right away. Yes. So we got to understand seasons. Love that. And then you know, prayer. Prayer, right? Prayer and meditation because uh, God uh, will allow it to grow. The creator will allow it to grow if he wants it to grow. So I, I like that you brought that up because it takes the pressure off the family member to think that you got to convince someone or that they got to see things your way. The creator is still doing a great work in them as well as in you. Would you agree, Ms. Dagbar? You know it. You know it. And so, you know, it, it's it's about it's about one of our our previous F's, faith. Yes. You yes. See? And so, you know, it's like when when you plant a seed, you know what's supposed to happen. You mm -hmm. see? And so it's like the unseen, believing in the unseen. When you put that seed in the ground, it's no longer visible. Yes. Thank you. you know, yes, ma'am. And uh, next week, we're going to be talking about finances, but finances and family and faith and, you know, uh, fitness and fun, they can all be spoke about in the same setting. You know why? Because everything we do is around all of those. Yes. You know, you those know, five Fs happen to be the cop in our lives. And what is the cop? The central organizing principle yes. by which we live by. Perfect. And it's faith, family, finance, fitness, and fun. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I'm glad we're talking about finance because the subtopic to that is going to be travel. Ah. So, mm -hmm. so we will see everyone. I just want to... Toast to you, Mr. Agbar. There you have your wonderful day. Thank you for jumping on. Um, yeah, and I'm looking forward to our next level up with Agbar's next level conversation. Have a wonderful day, everyone. Peace and blessings to you. Peace and blessings to you.